So far, we've brought together SwiftUI, PH Picker View Controller, and Core Image. But honestly, the app still isn't terribly useful. After all, this sepia tone effect is very nice, but it isn't that interesting ultimately in the grand scheme of things. To make this whole app better, we're going to add uh, an option to customize the filter, this change filter button down here, and we'll do that with a confirmation dialog. And on iPhones like this one here, it'll slide up a list of buttons from the bottom, which you can add to as many as you want. It'll even scroll if you want to add very many. To do this, first in our content view, we're going to add a new property to track whether we're currently showing the confirmation dialog or not. So we'll say at state private var showing filter sheet is false. And now we can go ahead and add our buttons using the confirmation dialog modifier. This works identically to alert. Give it a title plus a condition that tells whether it's showing or not, our showing filter sheet thing here. And as soon as that thing becomes true, that confirmation dialog will appear. So we'll start off by adding a new modifier to our main view down here by our sheet, which is confirmation dialog. And I'll say select the filter as our title and is presented. This will be bound to dollar showing filter sheet. And then we'll put our dialog here. And now to present that thing, we want to modify this little change filter comment for our button to toggle the Boolean. So we'll say showing filter sheet is true. I mentioned earlier that for longer pieces of action, I like to spin it off into its own little functional method like this. For smaller ones, you know, it's dubious benefit in this particular kind of layout in more advanced apps where you have uh, your state being tracked by an external object rather than by your view. That's later in the course, um, yes, you'd spin it out. But here, I think a one line inline closure is fine. Now, in terms of what to show inside our confirmation dialog down here, uh, we can just pass in an array of buttons, just like an alert. We can also pass an optional message, again, just like alerts. And again, the buttons are just the same you've seen before. Regular Swift UI buttons with text, action, role, and more. And it'll just put them out into the sheet automatically. It'll look different because it's a confirmation dialogue now rather than inline little uh, text button like this, but it's still a lot of buttons. Now, uh, for the dialogue in this particular app, we want users to be able to choose from other kinds of core image filters that we've kind of pre selected as being good options. And when they choose one, we want to activate it immediately and apply it immediately. So you'll see sepia tone change to twirl distortion or pixelate or crystallize, whatever you want to. Uh, and to do this, we'll write a method that will uh, modify current filter, which right now is uh, always our sepia tone filter here. And I'll modify that to whatever the new one they chose and then call load image straight away. Now, as a reminder, load image down here, we'll make sure there is an image, make a CI image out of it, and then pass that into the current filter as its input image, and then apply the processing that we have right now as our intensity. Um, and there's a wrinkle in our plan. It's a result of the way Apple wrapped core image APIs to make them more sort of friendly. Um, behind the scenes, as you've seen this thing here, um, core image is basically stringly typed, not strongly typed, stringly typed. So rather than inventing new classes for us to work with, Apple instead has a whole series of protocols that wrap up this stringly typed information for us in careful ways. And it means that when we have our, our filter, if you look at the type of current filter, you'll see it's actually CI filter and CI sepia tone. It's a combination of things together that describe how it works. It is a CI filter that conforms to a protocol called CI sepia tone. And that protocol, CI sepia tone, then exposes uh, the intensity value here. Uh, but behind the scenes, it just calls set value filter intensity for key uh, intensity key. That's what it's doing behind the scenes. Um, and so it's, it's more complex behind the scenes. It exposes its properties, but it just really sets these strings, image key, input key, intensity key, who knows what, behind the scenes. This way of working, let's, let's be generous and call it flexibility, actually works in our favor here because it means we can write code that works across all filter types. As long as we're not careful, 
to set an invalid value by accident. Something the, the filter cannot understand. And so we're going to start by saying this current filter is not just a sepia tone. It is, in fact, a regular CI filter. We could put any kind of filter in there, not just sepia tone. So again, saying sepia tone returns a CI filter, great, but adds a restriction that it must conform to CI sepia tone, which was fine when we only had sepia tone. But now we want to have other kinds of filters as well. We've said, no, don't be quite so specific. Actually, this can be any kind of filter at all. Crystallize, pixelate, you name it, and so forth. We're saying it doesn't have to conform to sepia tone, just the filter thing. And so, thanks to that, we're going to lose access to that sort of intensity property we were using before. That thing will no longer work because it doesn't exist anymore. It, it was fake anyway, really. It's just there from a CPO tone thing. And instead, we're going to replace that with a call to set value for key. So, uh, we're going to say in here, current filter dot set value. And our value is our filter intensity for key KCI input intensity key. See, all, there are keys to everything we we're using, dot intensity, dot radius, dot center, da, da, da. They're just different kinds of keys right here as uh, these strings being poked into the dictionary. And this again is another constant value and it has the same effect as doing our filter dot intensity equals blah, blah, blah. Except now we haven't got the intensity. If we looked at current filter and tried intensity, it's gone. That came from the uh, sepia tone. So we can't do it anymore. Anyway, with that change, we can now return to our action sheet, a little confirmation dialogue, sorry, called them these days, and modify this to uh, create different kinds of filters. So we could say, uh, let's add a new thing down here, func set filter to a new filter, which is a CI filter, put that into our current filter, and then immediately call load image again. Get the image as a CI image, put it into the current filter, and then call apply processing. So it'll load it and modify it straight away. So now we can go ahead and start adding buttons in our dialog. We can go uh, our dialog up here. We can say uh, all the types of filters we want to support. Now I've picked out a handful I think look good, but there are many in core image. So we'll start off with a button crystallize, like that, crystallize. And this will do uh, set filter, CI filter, dot crystallize like that and i'm going to copy and paste that a few times i'll just modify it so let's do uh, crystallize edges uh gaussian blur that's three pixelate sepia tone unsharp mask vignette and then we'll do a cancel button at the end so let's go ahead and fill these in we've got crystallize we've got edges that is ci filter dot edges we have gaussian blur say filter Gaussian blur, like that. Then we have uh, our friend oh, Pixelate, which is CI filter Pixelate. Then sepia tone, what we have right now is sepia tone. Then we have, oops, crazy, here we go, unsharp mask, unsharp mask. And finally, vignette, vignette. And this last one is our cancel button. So I'll like cancel and give it the role of dot cancel. So it gets a bit more bold and remove its code. It doesn't have to do anything inside there. Um, I have picked these out from the vast range of CI filters because there are lots of these things. You can just scroll through and see more yourself. Lots and lots and lots. And they're very, very impressive. The things you can do, really quite beautiful. Anyway. Oh, yeah, vibrance and oh man, it's such nice filters in here. Um, you can absolutely noodle around later on in your own time. I'm going to use just those three here. Um, but but experiment, see, I feel dot whatever and have a poke around, see what happens. It might require some experimentation, but that's not a problem. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, I'll press command R, and if you remember, it's sepia tone by default. So if I set a picture here and then get our leaves again. It'll snap in all being well, and I can drag the slide around like before. Remember, it's a bit slow on our uh, simulator, but it's still fine. 
I'll then change to uh, a vignette filter down here. And if I drag it to the right now, you should see it darkens the edges like that. So it creates sort of a, a halo around it for actually more. It's quite a, a mild effect here. Perhaps increase the range of intensities with that. Um, but it's so from full edges down to darkening the edges to sort of focus the middle a little bit. Anyway, um, now I'd like to try and change the filter to Gaussian Blur. And that'll happen. <laughs> uh, you'll see bang all over the place. It's unhappy. Now, Gaussian Blur ought to blur the image and isn't sort of a hazy star to it. But instead, it's going to crash our app because um, we have jettisoned the CI sepia tone restriction for our filter, which is great. It works with other kinds of filters too. But we're now having to use set value for key again and again and again, which provides no safety. Because before we said current filter dot intensity equals blah, and it knew intensity worked with sepia tone, because that was the protocol CI sepia tone. That doesn't exist anymore. It's a generic CI filter. So we're saying, hey, um, Gaussian blur, set your intensity. And it hasn't got an intensity. It doesn't know how to do intensity. It's telling us this is not key value coding compliant for the key input intensity. What it means is Gaussian blur does not have an intensity. To fix this and to make our uh, single slider do much more work, we're actually going to add some code that will read all the valid keys we can use with each filter. And then it'll only apply the intensity key if this new filter supports intensity. And then we'll say, actually, um, do you support other kinds of values as well? Do you support radius? Do you support something else? Um, and send them all in for that single slider. So it'll work with a wide range of filters out of the box, which is really nice. And so we're going to read all the keys at work and just set the ones that actually do work in that particular new filter. So for uh, sepia tone, it'll be intensity. For Gaussian blur, it'll do the radius, which is the size of the blur, and so on. And this will work with any kind of filter, anything at all, which means you can experiment with others to your heart's content safely. It will not crash. It'll be absolutely safe no matter what. The only thing you'll be careful of is that this range of zero to one for our intensity might make sense for intensity for sepia tone, but for radius for Gaussian blur, it's between zero and one pixel is a very, very, very mild blur. And so to keep our single slider intensity working well, we're going to add some multiples. We're going to say, um, I want a, a zero to 200 as our, our slider value here um, to really multiply it up to be a strong, strong blur which will be slow again in the simulator, but it'll be lightning fast on devices. Anyway, um, we now have a single key here. What we're going to do instead is say beforehand, let input keys be current filter dot input keys. Read all the things this can actually support. This is back an array of strings. And remember, each one of these KCI input yada 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 keys are strings. So we can go ahead and query those. We can say if input keys, keys dot contains KCI input, intensity key, then we support intensity. Great. Go ahead and pass in uh, an intensity value. Let's do that. There we go. I will uh, copy and paste again. Uh, we'll then say, uh, do the input key support a radius key? Radius key. And then if they do, pass in the radius key. But this time, multiply the intensity by 200 to really bring out the radius with stronger blurs. And finally, we'll say, uh, do you support a scale key? Case I input scale key, set uh, scale key. And this time we'll do times 10. This is nothing magic here. I've just used trial and error to figure out which large values actually look good with these things. And so by all means, you experiment and try it out. And now hopefully we can press command R and the full set of our filters will work correctly. Again, slowly in the simulator, but lightning fast on real devices. So I'll bring in uh, our leaf picture again. And there it is with partial sepia tone. I'll now say edges, which brings out, or tries to bring out. Oh, it's, oh, it's very slow. <laughs> that might work better on a real device, perhaps. Uh, let's try Gaussian blur. There we go. So it's gently blurred it. I drag to the right, it'll be very, very slow. There we go, it's blurring it more and more. Then let's do pixelate. And then drag that across further and further. It's trying. 
That might require a bigger multiple taps, that one. Then let's try uh, Unsharpened Mask. Oof, yeah, so that's super sharpened the uh, leaf picture. Not so nice. Uh, and then you've seen me getting ready. So, uh, let's, let's try Crystallize already. Crystallize. There we go, Crystallize. So that also works nicely now, and that hopefully isn't... Oh, he's actually quite slow. <laughs> there we go. Anyway. So we've now got a wide range of filters. Nothing will crash anymore because our code says, do you support intensity? Do you support radius? Do you support scale? And then multiplies in various values as a result. So there's lots of things happening here and you can go ahead and add more buttons there as much as you want to. So just try experimenting now with different filters and keys and just see what kind of output you can find.